So I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about connecting, connecting IPFS users and permissions to the IDs uh, with UCANs. So in the previous talk, uh, it was more about how to go to production. On this topic, we are still far away, but not too far. Mm -hmm. And we are already kind of testing out. We have some, uh, some stuff already working and it's pretty interesting. And we want to um, dig deeper into this and start using this more and more in our services and connecting our services with identity, with permissions, making them more flexible and more powerful and easier to integrate from the, out, the, the outside with other services, not specific like the stuff we built. Uh, so yeah, that's me, we can move on. Um, so uh, the IDs. Um, so the IDs, uh, I'm just gonna go through uh, really fast uh, about the IDs because it's just to tie in to other, to other things. So the IDs, identity, authentication, proof of control, decentralized, self-issue, um, several things that I good about the IDs. Um, I don't know if you know about this, but yeah, it took a while, but um, it was advanced to a W3C recommendation. And uh, the director said, yeah, let's, uh, the balance lies in favor of the ID developer communi commu community and the objections are overruled. Um, yeah, several other companies were kind of uh, blocking this up, but yeah. <laughs> Now it's, yeah. Um, so uh, we, for now, uh, are focusing on the ID key method. So this is an example of how that works. So stuff that you, that you probably already know, like multi-base and multi colleagues are all in there. This is basically a, a, a public key um, identifier. And one of the things that um, some considerations in, around this method, um, around security, around privacy, can be addressed uh, with the stuff that I'm going to talk right after, which is UCANs. Uh, so stuff around revocation and even uh, rotation uh, can be dealt with. So the, the two pair up uh, really well. So yeah, UCANs. Um, user-controlled authorization networks. Um, and one of the great like uh, phrases for you can is, is this one, like transfer authority without transferring keys. Um, so we, we, we started talking about the ideas, it's more like identity, who you are, and you can is more like what you can do. Uh, and the way to transfer those, that, that authority, that, those capabilities to other actors in your system, in your networks, uh, in whatever way you want. Um, yeah, some of the, the great things about you can uh, trustless, secure, local first, attenuation, revocation, verifiable, it's the, uh, the, the delegation, it's expressive, extensible, and it's all about capabilities. So with this, we can kind of achieve uh, kind of a, an inversion of control back to the user, uh, uh, and the user is in control of the capabilities, who to delegate, what to delegate, um, so it uh, uh, turns the, the, the whole authentication and authorization uh, on, on this side. Um, so you can't, with you can't um, add all that you need to kind of uh, sign into multiple machines to delegate access to other service providers, uh, do things for you while you are offline. That's one of the kind of great examples when you need to go offline uh, and you need to delegate uh, to a third party, like a pinning service, for example, uh, to do stuff for you. Um, and yeah, uh, let's move on. Oh yeah, so as I was saying, permission delegation is also one of the great things. So permission delegation is something traditional services uh, or centralized services can't really um, easily offer, but you can. <laughs> so, as I was saying, the IDs uh, and you can, they kind of love each other and complement each other. And this is kind of a, one example of uh, how a, a you can looks like. So here we have Alice um, um, delegating something to, to Bob. So 
this is kind of like like the resource uh, and the, the the action or the operation like upload here is kind of okay. There's a namespacing thing going on there, and you all the operations under that namespace you're kind of delegating to Bob. Um, and on the next one, so if then Bob wants to delegate someone else, in this case, like a service like the ones we have, like NFTL storage, uh, like something is kind of missing here. This doesn't really make sense, right? Because now Bob wants to, to uh, this would be like an invocation you can. So this would, is the thing that you send us saying, okay, I'm gonna upload something. And now th these don't make sense, like Bob, NFTL storage, and Alice, Something is kind of missing here, right? Uh, so actually, what it really looks like is something like this. So Bob wants to upload to NFT.storage, but to the like the, the Alice bucket or the Alex namespace. Um, so he needs a proof from Alice. So the, the, the proof is this one. So Alice delivered to, to Bob for to upload or basically do whatever action under this namespace to this resource uh, pointer, and that one can use this one as a proof, and it can actually, this would actually work to, to do an upload. Uh, actually, probably exactly like, like this, it would work on NFT storage somewhat. Uh, so this is basically uh, an overview on how uh, a UCAN and a UCAN chain, or the proofs in a, in a, in a UCAN work. So yeah, so here's a, uh, this was the first prototype, the, the first thing that we did when we start looking. Re yeah, yeah. Uh, this was like the first prototype that we did uh, when we start looking into UCANs. And this is, this is actually uh, in production, but that's like a, a preview feature um, on NFT.storage. So what we, what, what we have here, and this was like to, to solve a real uh, use case that we have and we still have um, uh, right now, which is like, we have our service, NFT.storage, we have like an NFT marketplace, and the NFT marketplace has Alice, probably running some, uh, going to a website or a browser or something like that. Normally what would happen is like, um, Alice would need to upload the thing to, to the marketplace and then the marketplace uploads to us, which is kind of uh, troublesome and we can do better. And one way to do it better is with UCANs because there's a delegation going on. So we have the um, NFT servers on that side uh, that can uh, delegates uh, the, uh, the permission or a UCAN to do uploads to the marketplace because it's like it's the, the marketplace account um, and we know about it. So that, that yellow thing there is, it, it's about like the marketplace as an account with us. So Alice doesn't, Alice has an account with the, the marketplace. Uh, so the marketplace starts like the process there. So they start by getting, uh, informing us about their own DID. We sign a UCAN for them and we give them, uh, we give them the actual UCAN so they can do whatever. So it's the wildcard thing so they can do all of the things under the upload namespace. So now they can delegate to their own users and they can, uh, they can uh, delegate like short lived UCANs for browser sessions and with, uh, they can attenuate the capability instead of the wildcard, they can just say, okay, for like 20 minutes, uh, Alice can do one upload and that's it. And if it expires, they can do the loop and ask for a new UCAN and move on. One of the, the interesting things here and this is more actually on the how you can works uh, is like this uh, this bit here like if you see if you look like in this diagonal this is the actual you can chain the delegation chain that's really interesting and that's basically how you can are really awesome and really powerful um, because we can verify all of that so what happens at the end when all this delegation uh, and is here, Alice doesn't need to upload to the marketplace. It can just upload to us directly. So just right there is like a, a big win. That's why we kind of started looking into this more and more and more. And now we are even doing more, thing, more things and like everything 
similar to this. But in, on this example, as I said, this was just one and the first prototype. There's actually one thing that kind of could be better, which is that bit over there, where uh, the service is the one delegating to the marketplace. So now in the, the new stuff that we're trying, uh, building, uh, the marketplace can actually just self-issue that you can. It doesn't need to talk to us first. The only thing, it needs to create an account. It needs to tell us about the ID, but it ne doesn't need us to issue him the, the UCAN itself because he, he's, he's, he has an account, so he can just self-issue. Uh, some operations can work like that. Some others are harder and more complex and more so others may still come from the service, but in general, uh, most of the operation the user can just self-issue. Uh, okay. okay, so now one of the things that we did after that first prototype was actually um, build up an implementation of UCANs uh, in IPLD via advanced data, uh, data layouts designed for use with the multi-formats. And the, the, it was directly Gonzala, you may know him, that actually built this. Um, not what we have with it is like we have an IPLD schema that can be encoded as Daxibor. Um, we also support um, encoding as JWTs and others. Um, and we also support like raw JWTs um, with a little bit of magic in there so we can uh, account for white space and key order and stuff like that because we need to keep those for the signatures to match. Um, and the good thing about it is like we can export a full you can chain into a car file. And then having car files is kind of awesome because you, we know that we can do a bunch of stuff with it as we were talking indexes and Elastic IBFS is all about car files. So it's really nice for the system that we have right now. And to tie everything together is uh, you can too. So you, you can too, yeah, 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 we, we can. And we, <laughs> we will uh, do more stuff with it. So this is kind of the, the, um, the container or the, how we wrap everything together. Um, because it's a framework that we can use to build our, uh, you can base RPC APIs. Um, and when we say, or I say APIs, doesn't need to be a REST API. It can be a lip P2P RPC type of stuff or PubSub, whatever you want. Um, some nice things about it is like, um, it has a nice way to define your capabilities and it, it uh, kind of, guides you to, okay, you, you should start by defining your capabilities and then it gives you the tools uh, coming out of the, the capability definition to do everything else, like setting up the connections, actually invoking those capabilities to trigger the operation and stuff like that. Um, the second one is like actually basically that, which is, is also able to um, route the, the capability invocation and actually execute it. Uh, there's also the, the you can validation system inside it. This is more on the on the server side of it. Um, and it's also pluggable in the transport layer, as in the actual transport. So it can be HTTP, it can be live HTTP, and also in the codex for the requests and the response. Um, and the, the last bit is more about like the client uh, side of it, which um, we support like batch invocation, so we can uh, invoke several things at, at the same time. It's basically sending multiple UCANs or you can change at the same time. Uh, and also has like full type inference uh, from the server. So yeah, w wrapping everything, we have the IDs, we have that you can, we have you can too. So what, what does that mean? That means that we can have identity permission operations all packaged up uh, as car files. Um, and with car files, we can even uh, include, like the, the, the interest, interesting bit is like, with, we can package everything. We can package multiple operations and we can have the ID and permissions plus a list of several things. We can do 
the, the upload of a file, and at the same time, we can update the IPNS record in some way. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but yeah, in, in this way, this, the service or the actors in the system, then they are just interpreters of these operations. Um, there's not much to it besides that. Uh, and also because all the information is captured in the IPLD structure, in the car file, uh, like, like the, the pipe being HTTP or whatever, is just basically a dump pipe transporting bytes from one place to the other. Um, so one of the things that we already did, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, is actually we integrated kind of three systems using all of this. So we have like the access service, which actually handles the, the accounts. And that's where the, like the user tells us about their, their the, the IDs. And we have like a an, an, uh, user entry point that right now is basically just a CLI to upload um, files. And the third system integrated was um, what we call uploads v2, which uh, where the, the, the bytes go, where the file gets uploaded to. And after that, it's all about the Elastic IPFS that you already heard about. And we kind of, it was kind of cool because we, we kind of worked uh, separately, communicating, but in separate ways. But when we tried to integrate it, it worked like kind of beautifully. Like the first time we tried to integrate everything, everything works like the first one we tried. So it was kind of cool. And it validated all, all the stuff, that, all the tooling we are building, and also like the, the use case and why you can uh, are so cool. Uh, and also the tooling that we built is kind of pretty awesome. So yeah, I was talking about like we can do multiple operations um, inside the car file. Uh, one of the, the, the nice things would be to have like delegated IPNS mutations. Uh, and that's the thing we really want to kind of go into. We already have like the blue three name that was a previous talk early in the day, but the, what would be really interesting it's to actually uh, support you can in uh, something like W3 name, which uh, is not actually IPNS, and it's really hard for it to be IPNS until actually IPFS kind of supports you can. We uh, tried and probably still discuss a lot more about this. If we have any way to be compatible and still like have the, the proper IPNS records in the network or not, but Right now, it's kind of hard to get there. So we're probably going to build an IPNS that supports um, UCANs. And hopefully, with that experience gain, with that knowledge, we can bring back to implementations and kind of convince them, OK, UCANs are cool. Maybe you should support that. And everything can work uh, together much better. Um, uh, so yeah, some of the use cases for this is like uh, uploading a file and at the same time, like changing an IPNS record or an IPNS record. Because as, as I said, the card file already has the identity, already has the permissions, and it can do two things at the same time. But because we are sending that to a service like an ft.storage or web3.storage, we can you need to delegate that permission. So either you sign the thing and just put it inside the card file. So signing the thing is like the IPNS record, or you can just delegate it. Just tell us, okay, I want to update the record to this uh, new CID or whatever. Um, but if we have we can, we can, we don't need to sign it. The user doesn't need to sign it, just needs to delegate to permission for us to sign it. And then we can hook up into W3 name and all the nice things that uh, W3 name does. We can also do like um, transfer la large docs into like shards. Uh, across multiple network requests and kind of create sessions and use IPNS to, to be like the, the thing that ties up the session and kind of creates a session. It's also really useful, and I'm really excited about this one, uh, which would be like uh, uncoordinated multiplayer DAC creation or transfer, which is more of a, an advanced thing. But if we start building up all these primitives, we can get there, and I think it can really work. Um, and then at the end, it's all about can we actually make um, it really IPFS? So we would need help from IPFS implementations and whatnot to be able to tie everything together. 
and to finish up, what if IPFS could talk to you can? Like, as I told you, like delegate IPNS mutation would be kind of great. Uh, it can also be useful to delegate IPFS operations to remote nodes, writable gateways, uh, gateway routed operations, maybe even bit swap, what else? Uh, if you are interested in this topic, let's talk more about it. Um, and yeah, just some future work. It's all a big thing, key management. It's kind of hard. And we're still talking about what's the best way to handle key management on the client side and on the backend side. Uh, we need definitely need to improve the tooling and build more tooling. Uh, on the UCAN side, there's still some spec work to be done to be improved, especially on the transports. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, this QR code is just for the slides if you want to look into it. And we're also doing Thursday uh, an open session about UCANs that we call it uh, You Can Join. Um, and yeah, links for it will be uh, sent in Slack. And if you're interested, strict pun first development. Yes. Yes. Great naming. Like, really, like just a level of <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, uh, so mo yeah, I'm a little bit over, but if you have any questions, I think we are kind of the last one. Uh, in our use case, um, it works most like that because we kind of have like the, the centralized type of HTTP API. Uh, but in the future, what we want to evolve into is more of a decentralized. It's, that's why like naming is always hard. And I, I'm, I was talking about client and servers, and that's one of the things that we, we want to kind of change it's, it, because it's not going to be always like that, like a client and server, it's more like nodes and actors talking to each other. But we don't actually need like a server to be the, the, um, the, the, the target for a, an invocation, a new a, a invocation. We just can do lip to be from one node to the other and just say, oh, I want you to do this thing for me. And here's the thing that proves that you can do it. In the, in the in, uh, you can. wider you can space, it was originally concepted as this works offline. Yeah. Um, so, like to support local first use cases, but permission to encrypt encrypted. So, definitely peer to peer. Mm -hmm. It was designed to go to that, and we actually did server based versions second because people were like, Boris, shut the hell up, we're still running servers. <laughs> but it turns out that there's a lot of useful use cases on the server side as well. And remixing, right? So, ideally, uh, Fission will run uh, DNS gaming service. So, and if you have storage, does it? might focus on IPNS and people could delegate no. a DNS service um, that technically is run by Fusion, but you mix and match all of these things. Anybody who exposes something that you can enable, developers, users, and so on, you can remix all of these things across different areas. Also, we'll eventually put our services up over the PFD. So like it will be sort of centralized, but like the protocol would be the same if you wanted to run a service in a peer to peer network and or not the service, but just a peer to peer network solving the same protocol. Yeah, to the naming thing, like the client and server, it's actually been tricky because there's not clients and servers anymore, but you're still working in like an RPC model. Mm -hmm. We actually like named some interface of client and server, and like the contractor like couldn't figure out how the library worked because they were like, what? <laughs> half of the server? Like, what? Like, this exactly. This, this was a real issue. <laughs> he, 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 he like lost his mind. Now. I could. Mean, <laughs> 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 the you can work group is really kind of some stuff like maybe you do sender or receiver or work, something like that. Yeah, so yeah. that needs some work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like still just figuring out the language. Like it's, it's amazing how fast you can take an up and where it's gotten adopted, given like it's, it hasn't been around that long. We're still like figuring out basic language. So, so. Uh, maybe that's a good question is like who else is using you other than vision um, There's actually a, a talk, uh, one, right? Uh, some folks from Subconscious and Nosphere are talking about it. And they uh, touch a little bit on UCANs because they are using it. Uh, some more examples are, I don't know. Web5 team. Web5 it's team. Not actually a joke, unfortunately. That's uh, Jack's lock. So a lot of uh, DID-centric stuff 
that is tied to Microsoft Island Bitcoin stuff, mm -hmm. they've ended up plugging and saving the capability depth of the allocation model um, that's based on PID, so you can't stay there. Blue Sky, uh, Blue Sky, yeah. Blue Sky also. Blue, Blue Sky uh, ceramic network is using it again also for some delegation and we're looking at more and are actively participating in the working group. Um, um, so more and more people uh, basically adopting it and it's been graduated. It's an open community working group that everybody participates. And a large traditional web media publisher. Right, right. yes, I yes. In it, but... Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it actually solves a lot of traditional cases really well. Because like, if you just run four websites mm -hmm. and you want to have like users that are in all of them, like it becomes very tricky just to make your own infrastructure to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's some of the things that really use help on. So like, Mike has written up some writing that is currently mm -hmm. private that I would love for him to publish on the like, UK. It was a little bit for our team to get a lot done, but like, yeah. yeah and, um, uh, and yeah, as an example, so one of the other use cases that we wrote up as a blog post is, uh, imagine you're an e-commerce vendor and you want to get discounts um, from shop A to shop B. Um, are you going to say, are you going to share your entire customer database of email addresses? You are not, um, but can you like, this is more sort of a verifiable credential, but it's a similar pattern. So you have a small sign token that says, yes, I bought something from shop A. And so all of a sudden shop B just needs to read that and say, yes, that's a yes. Um, and, and, and solves that. Yeah. We're also like over time going to have all of our internal distributed system as the IDI within the EPS system. So when you, you'll ask our services to call these, and then you'll actually see that service delegate to another token that's like, you know, the 24-hour, like, key that we use in Lambda, and then our clock will rotate, right? So all of our internal key rotations you'll see in the chain. Um, and we can then, at any time, break those into other services. We're not bound to any infrastructure company anymore, right? Like, if you run into any cloud provider, it just all looks the same. Um, it's, it's really nice. Like, it, it provides us a ton of flexibility. And like as various blockchain networks get good at different things, we can plug those into the service tiers where they make sense, rather than trying to just like all or nothing approach where um, you know like half of the user use cases are solved yet, but you have to be impacted. Yeah. It's a lunch. <laughs>